No, we can't. Our love is forbidden. I am a goblin. You have no flesh. Hey! Ha! Welcome, 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 everybody, to another episode of Fantasy News. I am your disheveled goblin host, Daniel Green, and today we have a wonderful little series of stories that I will cover to the best of my abilities that we are going to get through. Yes, I slapped the Fantasy News logo out of the way at a different time. Did it bother you? Let me know in the comments down below. Without any further ado, let's go ahead and jump on into our first story of the day. And that is actually going to be Sanderson slash Cosmere News because we've had the official cover reveal for the Lost Metal in the UK edition. And of course, they are continuing on into what we've seen for almost every every UK Cosmere cover, and that's going to be that more minimal, abstract, interpretable, other words, cover, style, and design. I was initially super duper hot on this style for Cosmere, and I still do very, very much so like it, but I think I prefer my more fleshed out art that we get in a lot of the US covers, actually. But I get that there is a hardcore group that absolutely is willing to go out of their way to try and buy the UK editions even over here in the US, which I don't blame you. They really are spectacular. And we already knew this, but just a reminder that it'll be released November 15th of this year, 2022. But continuing on into news that is tangentially Sanderson related, depending on how you view his completion of the Wheel of Time. But we've had our first teaser drop for Wheel of Time season two. And if you would like to see my full reaction video right there. But for now, let's go ahead and move on because we got a bulky boy of fantasy news today. And I'm also just really excited to talk about the fact that the SPFBO awards are going to be going through and selecting their favorite cover for 2021. So if you would like to see the finalists, go ahead and just check out the link that'll be right below that like button. Hint, 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 hint. And I know a bunch of you are dirty, dirty little kinky weirdos who like to just look and judge at covers you're not even gonna read, don't ya? Don't ya? Well, guess what? You can get that fix right down there and maybe get inspired to check out an indie fantasy book, which I'm always encouraging you to do. These authors appreciate your love and reading more than any other authors out there. I promise you that. Does climate change fill you with existential dread on the regular? Same! Every single day, not enough is being done to help combat the inevitable effects of climate change that are going to ravage this world. And oh my God, does that make me feel terrible all the time. Fortunately, today's sponsor, Rin, can provide you a way to actually minimize your own personal contribution to this problem. That's right, if you follow the link in the description, you'll be taken to a website where you'll fill out a quick questionnaire to find out just how big your carbon footprint is. From there, you'll be taken to a list of amazing organizations doing all kinds of incredible work to help minimize the effects of climate change in the long run. You can set up one-time or monthly donations and then... BAM! You are no longer one of the big contributing factors to climate change because you're going to be equaling or even more so than offsetting your own personal carbon footprint. And these are some badass science projects you're backing here. Stuff that's gonna end up removing carbon from the environment for millions of years, potentially. We have forest fire prevention, providing clean cooking fuel for refugees, and tech-enabled Amazon rainforest protection. If you wanna be able to brag at a party next time Steve is there, because we all know Steve is the worst and just lord your own morality over him, what better way to do so than making sure your carbon footprint is 100% smaller? than his. So if you would like to receive monthly updates about how you're offsetting your carbon footprint and follow along with these awesome projects as they develop and get their mission done, go ahead and check out the link in the description today. And the first 100 people to sign up with that link will get 10 extra trees planted in their name. But feel free to say, eh, not today. That's fine. It's not like climate change requires urgent action. Now, but Oh, we actually are getting a last minute update from the news field here. This is apparently in regards to a One Piece update for the One Piece film, One Piece Red. We're gonna go ahead and toss it to our reporter in the field. Oh, we're doing that now. Teching 101 here, One Piece news expert extraordinaire. And yes, we have some new information regarding the upcoming One Piece film, One Piece, Film Red, coming to theaters August 6th. We got some new sketch artwork of a brand new character, kind of, sort of, straight from the desk of Oda himself. Here's the character design right here. This character will be referred to as Sunny Kun, and you may remember such character designs as from 
Well, the Thousand Sunny, which is the Straw Hat's main ship. This character, as revealed in this article by Crunchyroll, is purportedly the Thousand Sunny, the ship, transformed into a living being somehow that allows it to, you know, walk around and, you know, talk and interact with the Straw Hat Pirates. My best guess is that in One Piece Film Red, there will probably be a new character introduced that has some form of devil fruit power that can transform inanimate objects into living beings, and that character does such a thing to the Sunny, transforming it honestly into a character that looks a lot like Tony Tony Chopper. So it's like if Tony Tony Chopper and the Thousand Sunny did the fusion dance, this would be the end result. Um, so it's rather fascinating. I'm really looking forward to seeing what the Thousand Sunny character is going to say to the Straw Hats. Now, it's already been revealed in One Piece that the ships do have souls. So in a sense, they're already living beings. Maybe that might tie into it a little bit. There are souls that bind themselves to the ships that are called Klabautermon. And basically when a ship is very much beloved by the crew, just like the Thousand Sunny and the Mary were very much loved by the Straw Hats and thought of as a member of their Nakama, a member of their family, um, the Club Altermon will appear. However, it's also revealed that it's actually a very bad omen if the Straw Hats themselves interact with the Club Altermon, uh, as Usopp did during Skypea, because if they do that, it's actually an omen that the ship will actually die soon, which in fact happened with the Mary. The Club Altermon was also seen on the Sunny, but this was like in an OVA, so I don't know if that's going to tie into this at all. The idea is maybe you can just turn the Thousand Sunny with the, the soul that it already has into a living being being that can interact with the Straw Hat crew. But clearly, that's what it says. It's a transformation. It's not like some character just wearing a Thousand Sunny like mascot outfit. Something else is the Thousand Sunny has a big fluffy tail, and there's actually a One Piece character that has a Devil Fruit ability that allows her to transform into other characters that also has a very similar fluffy tail. So I'm wondering if it's going to be that character, but I just don't know. Um, but I look forward to seeing uh, Sunny Coon interact with the rest of the Straw Hats as, you know, their family. It would be interesting for Sunny to talk to Frankie because Frankie is the one that actually built the Thousand Sunny. So would this character regard Frankie as their father? Bunch of really fun things, really interesting things can happen with this character, but I um, guess we're just going to have to wait for more information and to check out Film uh, Red when it comes out on August 6th. So thanks for having me on, Teching signing out. Now in a cascading torrent of negative Netflix news, I was able to actually find something that was a bit positive for fans of a rather large Netflix staple. It appears that the Stranger Things finale is actually going to be feature length. It's going to be over two hours long to bring the Stranger Things story to a conclusion. We already knew that this season was going to be one episode longer than the series typical eight and be released in two volumes, but this added bloated runtime for the last episode means this is truly going to be a gargantuan season of Stranger Things comparatively to what we've had before. Now, we we already knew that this was going to be Stranger Things second last season, so it's interesting to see that they're already seeming to just inflate it a good amount to tell a story that needs to be told. I am not going to say that that inflation is a bad thing without actually seeing the content that's going to be put forward. In fact, I would go ahead and say that it gives me a little bit more faith that they seem to be adjusting the season to tell the story appropriately as the way they feel it needs to be. The series is coming to a conclusion, and it doesn't seem to be being dragged out to some extreme extent five will be the final, and I like seeing structural changes to tell a story in a necessary way. This is fully taking advantage of something that is easier to do on a streaming service than regular television. Not impossible to do on regular television, it's just a bit harder. And while Stranger Things has had weaker seasons in my opinion, it's never sunk into bad, and I hope this means we're going to get this story to come to a conclusion at the appropriate time and not be bloated out, spun off, all these things in a way that would just, you know do what we've seen done to so many other franchises and series. I really do believe Stranger Things could stick its landing, and I would be so thrilled as a fan to see that. But we're going to move from that giant pillar of positive news into one of the few things I actually believe people need to be freaking over out more in a very negative way. Because we have seen it announced that Stan Lee is going to return to Marvel Studios with Genius Brands. Yes, this is the kind of company that'll bring in all kinds of old archive footage, deep fakes, and just total digital technologies to bring in dead people to projects, and um... Oh my god, I do not like that. This is one of the few steps forward for technology as someone who's a big tech geek that absolutely revolts me as a person. If someone is 
dead. Let them lay in peace, bringing some technological recreation of their face to do and say things in a context they cannot control will always rub me the wrong way. If a person is adamant in their life when they have their full cognitive abilities that they are okay with people doing this to them, that is one thing, but it is just so not what I think should be the acceptable standard for people's estates after they're gone to be giving permission to this. Just so much no. I'm well aware there's a disclaimer in this article that says like, oh, we're actually not going to be doing maybe possibly we could though kind of full digital recreations of Stan Lee and we're just going to be using archive, but they're still removing context and they're going to be doing what they can to insert him in all kinds of media around theme park rides and stuff that this guy did not necessarily consent to. And with the accusations of elder abuse around Stan Lee later in his life, I don't have faith that he actually would have wanted any of this and it freaks me out. Oh, this bothers me. Ah, ah. This is just a very clear, bold step into a sci-fi dystopia I do not want to become normalized. Please, for the love of God, no. And if in like 30 years, I somehow become famous enough and die that this is going to be done to me, you, the audience, need to absolutely dogpile whoever attempts to do it and say, absolutely not. I do not want my own agency taken away from my image. Holy shit, no. Now in a piece of franchise news that I really hope actually does do well because it's a franchise with a lot of potential, I believe, still left in it, but continually gets crafted into garbage, we have had a teaser drop for the Predator prequel Prey. And it shows people in a time period we have not seen yet covered for the Predator franchise running in the woods before those three iconic dots appear on the head of someone with a bow and arrow. And uh, I, I really want Predator to put out something good. Predators are cool, still maintain. They're badass alien concepts. They have just not been put in capable hands since Predator 2. And that is this many years ago. But hey, this could be the wonderful step that the Predator franchise needs, and let's hope that it is. We're gonna go ahead and roll on into the next piece of positive news, though, because my personal favorite comedy show of the last several years is officially going to be released for its season four on July. 12th. I did, I didn't, I did not have to double check the date. I almost said July 4th, which is actually my stepmom's birthday, but, uh, no, it's, um, it's July 12th, so. What We Do in the Shadows, season four, July 12th. I really can't wait. The show's best season is still season one. I give that like a perfect 10 out of 10. And then it's like stepped down to like an eight, nine out of 10 since then for me, but that's still so high and so good. And I am just thrilled to see it's gonna be getting a season four pretty soon. Oh, yay. Watch it if you have not already. It also has some of my favorite bi rep I've seen in like a long, long time. <laughs> now, if you are a big old Rick and Morty fan, you're probably going to be interested to hear that you're officially getting a Rick and Morty anime. And it's gonna be brought to you by Takashi Sano, which is all of these things on their resume. And uh, of all the things I was thinking could happen to the Rick and Morty franchise, an anime spinoff was not one of them. I was really actually fearing we were going to get like a live action version that would be cast with like, I don't know, Tom Holland as Morty or something. And that was just, oh, please dear God, no. <laughs> Daniel, there's no way Hollywood would be stupid enough. We're getting a live action Mario with Chris Pratt as Mario. Don't tell me that that's a stupid fear. <laughs> but an anime spinoff that's reportedly gonna be 10 episodes? Okay, I just find the Rick and Morty fan base to be very often suffering from a lack of content. The time between seasons can be quite girthy. So I guess I'm happy for them to get this as a supplementary material and uh, a different style approach for Rick and Morty still maintained within the animation genre it, or medium, sorry, is something I'm definitely curious enough for. I'm not as big a Rick and Morty fan as a lot of people. It's, I still think Futurama is better, come at me. But you know, I'll certainly be watching this because it's quality sci-fi absurdist content and who doesn't love quality sci-fi absurdist content but speaking of absurdist content i'm actually gonna go against what i've seen be the uh, mo main momentum for this next story because we have gotten our first look at mindy kaling's velma spinoff for scooby-doo that is aimed at adult audiences and i saw a lot of comments being like why would you make it velma then why does it have to be aimed at adults why are they putting gore and nudity in there and my response to that is quite simple because it's the creator's artistic intent. And I don't 
think it's actually necessarily a bad thing to take something from a lot of people's childhoods that have grown up into adults now and age it up with them and try to pull some humor and you know, jokes at the expense of, hey, it's these people investigating supernatural crimes and they never came across anything graphic or gory before. Why don't we actually do that? That could be kind of neat. And I hope they actually keep the angle that it never actually turns out to be supernatural and it's always just rich, greedy capitalist businessmen, real estate people. That's just the continual truth of Scooby-Doo. Canonically, in my head, every time it turned out to be like a real ghost in the later Scooby-Doo stuff, they just didn't actually solve the crime. That's how I choose to interpret it. I get that a lot of people have bad taste in their mouth from seeing stuff from their childhood exploited, but seeing it actually evolved and reinterpreted for a new imagining of a similar situation, I would be more bothered if it was just a blatant Scooby-Doo ripoff trying to shoehorn in a new character that's Velma-esque, and I like it more just being honest. This is an envisioning of that character doing a spin-off show that's more adult, and the specific comedian behind it is having it be more graphic and there's nudity and there's gore and I think that's fine. Uh, so yeah, I, I saw a lot of negative comments on Twitter, but I'm not judging it till it's out, all right? I think it's fine. Fight me. Now this last piece of fantasy news, try as I might, I was unable to verify it. And so I am bringing it to you audience with the gigantic asterisk of this is coming from avatarnews.co and they are the only person reporting this. So do not take it as truth. But according to them, an animated Avatar prequel and Zuko theatrical films are in development. And I just want the people behind this article to know that for no reason whatsoever, I've decided to keep a very close eye on this. Now, don't read into what I'm saying here at all, but if it turns out to be true, I'll be very excited and be following these films quite closely here on the channel. If this apparently turns out to be clickbait though, I just think that some consequences could possibly happen. There's nothing for anyone to worry about. I'm just, you know, choosing in this moment to uh, decide to shine a little spotlight on possible clickbait so we can all watch, wait, and see to see if this is actually credible. I'm excited, are you? But this has been your latest episode of Fantasy News. I have a secondary channel where I'm discussing the 100 greatest films from the AFI linked right here. I also have books and merch and a Twitch channel. There's so many ways to follow me if you want more on my face, but until then, like and subscribe if you have not already and hit the Patreon if you wanna support what I do here. Have a good one, y'all. Bye, peace, bye, all that stuff. Ah!